Hi, my name's Julianne Richards and I just participated in the meeting of the UN body that deals with what's called loss and damage from climate change. Loss and damage is the worst impacts of climate change that go beyond what it's possible to adapt to. Typically, it hits the poorest and the most vulnerable communities first, the ones that have the least resources to cope. It includes things like rising sea levels, stealing land from island communities and coastal communities. It includes things like droughts becoming worse, um, more frequent and more intense, um, ensuring that or making arable land less arable, meaning that communities can't grow the crops that they traditionally would have grown anymore. Uh, and it includes things like resources disappearing, for example, fish resources um, changing and disappearing in some parts because coral reefs are being eroded by climate change and other parts because um, oceans are becoming more acid and also because sea currents are changing. So given the severity of these climate impacts that are already being experienced and we know that are going to get much worse, one would expect climate change would be a high, uh, loss and damage would be a high priority, particularly for this meeting that has just happened. But sadly, that's not the case. This was the first of two meetings that this body has the budget to hold this year. It only has a budget for eight days of meetings this year. So given they've just used half of their budget, one would hope they might have been very productive during their meeting. Sadly, that was also not the case. The Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage Executive Committee um, was set up five years ago with a clear mandate to enhance finance for loss and damage. But it has yet, in all of those five years, including the meeting that's just happened, seriously addressed that mandate. Uh, at the meeting just gone, we saw the usual pattern, which is rich countries here, including the US, Australia, Germany, Norway, claiming variously that they didn't need to discuss finance at this meeting, that they didn't need an expert group on finance, that they couldn't possibly talk about finance until next year. Basically, they made any argument they could think of to avoid ways to, to talk about finding money for the poorest communities on the front line of climate impacts. This kind of delay and denial is just not good enough, especially not right now in the shadow of Cyclone Idai, one of Africa's worst ever tropical cyclones, and in fact, one of the Southern Hemisphere's worst ever tropical cyclones. It's killed more than a thousand people and affected more than three million people. The infrastructure damages alone are more than $1 billion uh, from some of the poorest countries. Uh, and that cost is likely to rise as costs come in. As civil society, we were so frustrated by this continual delay and denial at the Warsaw International Mechanism Executive Committee meeting that we've decided to host a workshop on finance for loss and damage ourselves and to invite the committee members along to that workshop and other countries who are interested. Um, and we hope to host that workshop in June and to make progress there and to demonstrate that it's possible to raise finance for loss and damage in a fair and just way, including from something like a climate damages tax, a tax on the fossil fuel industry uh, that will make the fossil fuel industry, the big coal, big oil, big gas industry, pay for the climate damage that it's responsible for. If you'd like to read more about loss and damage, and in particular, how to ensure we reach a climate and gender just solution for it, please have a look at this report that I authored for Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung. Uh, it's online on their website. Thank you.